It's time again for Oklahoma Sports Scene, our statewide weekly show across Oklahoma on Channel 3, on Cox, and worldwide on YouTube. And hello again, everyone. I'm Chris Link. Got a great show lineup for you, starting with Joe Castiglione celebrating his 25th year as the athletic director at Oklahoma. And you'll want to hear some of his great stories here. Also have Ryan Fulmer, the National College Baseball Coach of the Year from Old Roberts University, just back from the World Series in Omaha, Nebraska. And Matt Pinto, the voice of the Oklahoma City Thunder, talks about the NBA draft, looking ahead for the Thunder's season. Let's start, though, with this week's Tulsa World Hot Topics, beginning with that NBA draft. No draw in this past week's NBA draft, for sure. The San Antonio Spurs took the 19-0 European superstar from France, 7'4", Victor Wabanyama, the first of 58 players selected in two rounds of nationally televised action. We'll have more on that draft with a close-up look at the Thunder's picks with Matt Pitto, the radio voice of the Thunder. Tulsa Drillers missed out on the Texas League first half championship. They went cold at the worst time. They finished four games behind Arkansas after losing nine of its last 13 games. Second half of the season, though, will start this Wednesday on the road in Amarillo, Texas. Then the first six-game homestand will begin on the 4th of July through the 9th. Wichita comes to One Oak Field. By the way, Scott Hennessy. The Drillers manager since 2017. Now she's taking a leave of absence for medical reasons. Tulsa's major league affiliate, the uh, Los Angeles Dodgers, their parent club, have named uh, Juan Apodaca, the uh, Drillers interim manager. He's been the Hennessy's uh, bench and first base coach on the Tulsa team. Tulsa Auto's indoor pro football team lost its 10th in a row, playing at Massachusetts this past weekend. Lost up there to the Pirates, 43-24. The team returns to their final two games of the 2023 inaugural season, both at BOK. It'll be on July the 1st against Green Bay, then wrap the season up July 15th, hosting Quad City. Both games kick off at 7.05. After a 4-0 shutout road loss last week to Memphis FC, Tulsa FC Soccer Club is back in action this Friday, June the 30th. They'll take on Detroit City FC. The match kicks off at 8 p.m. at One Oak Field. Be broadcast locally by Channel 6 and streamed nationally on ESPN+. Heading into the second half of the United Soccer League Championship season, FC Tulsa's record, two wins, seven losses, and seven draws. The best of three for the College World Series Championship in Omaha, Nebraska, all-SEC affair Monday night, LSU and Florida. Our all Roberts University baseball team was the darling of the tournament, though. They made a big run, uh, won their first game there, before they got knocked out again. ORU's head coach, Ryan Fulmer, the National Coach of the Year, joins us on the set here to talk about ORU's magical season. And Oklahoma State University's main benefactor, the late T. Boone Pickens. T. Boone passed away back in 2019, but he still continues to support his alma mater. The legendary Energy Executive's estate announced a $120 million gift to OSU. The majority will go toward student scholarships and the recently announced o OSU Human Resources Complex. Also $31 million earmarked for extensive renovations to their outstanding golf course there, Karsten Creek course, that opened back in 1994. In all, Pickens has donated almost $650 million to his beloved Oklahoma State University. God bless T. Boone Pickens. We come back, Oklahoma's Athletic Director Joe Castiglione celebrating his silver anniversary, 25 years as the head man of the Sooners. That's coming up right after this on Oklahoma Sports Scene. As the sun rises over eastern Oklahoma, we are devoted to one thing, improving the health of our communities, our home. We are your friends your neighbors. We are the people of St. Francis. Billy Sims knows barbecue. How about nine meats, including brisket, chicken, pork, turkey, and ribs? Just to name a few and seven homestyle sides. We start early to slow smoke the most delicious meats for over 12 hours. Every day. Wherever you want, online, dine in, curbside, or carry out. We've had a passion for over 15 years of serving delicious barbecue to people like you. Billy Sims has fast, drop-in friendly neighborhood service. Loud enough for a tailgate and fancy enough for a wedding. Like we said, Billy Sims knows barbecue. You did it, Tulsa. You named the team. We named the team. You named the team. The Tulsa Oilers indoor football team kicks off in March, Saturday nights, 7 p.m., 
BOK Center. Season tickets are on sale now. Go to TulsaOilersFootball.com. That's TulsaOilersFootball.com to get your season tickets now. Don't miss your chance to experience the fast pace, helmet hitting, pad popping excitement of professional indoor football. TulsaOilersFootball.com. TulsaOilersFootball.com. It was April 30th, 1998, that Joe Castiglione was named the University of Oklahoma's Athletic Director. It could easily be said it was one of the most important days in the history of Sooner Sports. This year, Joe celebrates his 25th anniversary. Welcome again to Oklahoma Sports Scene, and Joe, happy silver anniversary with the Crimson and Cream. Thank you, Chris. And that uh, also marks for as long as we've known each other. Actually, we've known each other longer than that, but... Certainly getting to see each other for that many years. Well, just an incredible career, Joe. And I just saw that uh, you're now the longest tenured athletic director in the nation. And during your period, the different Big 12 schools have a combined 28 different athletic directors. What's your staying power, Joe? (laughs) Well, being around great people, certainly that starts for me uh, with being blessed to – support and uh, be part of a student athlete's journey and how gifted and talented they are. But most importantly, having a great staff, working with so many wonderful coaches and support staff, having a uh, very, very supportive administration and a board and a fan base. All of that goes together and can't leave out the media of which you're one, Chris, you know, had a chance to work with you and we've done countless interviews over yeah. the years that uh different ways and shapes or form uh so all that works together uh when when people realize you know that uh one success is rooted in other people's success and uh you subordinate your own ego to help them be successful and pour into them that's the uh, beginnings of a great formula we have a six-time athletic director of the year since coming to norman inducted in the Oklahoma Sports Hall of Fame in 2018, certainly well-deserved. And Joe, by talking numbers here, it's amazing. The difference when you came from the University of Missouri, took over the OU program in 1998, what was your budget then? What was your budget now this year for athletics in Oklahoma? It was $26 million when I arrived. The budget had already been put together for that first year on campus. And uh, this year, our budget will be in excess of $178 million. What's impressive to me, though, Joe, is you're one of the few programs that have kept this program uh, in the black. In fact, you actually, the athletic part gives back to the university. We've been a great partner for our campus, and and that's a good thing. Uh, We had to work through a great deal of um, operational debt in those early years. And once we were able to get ourselves on uh, um, good footing, you know, that debt was accrued before I got here. But uh, once we were able to pay that all back to the university and uh, those years that would follow, we've actually been um, supporting the academic budget. And uh, that is uh, done in a big way, which is now averaging between eight and ten million dollars per year. Well, during your tenure, Oklahoma's won 24 of their 43 national championships, including 17 over the past 11 years and 109 conferences championships during your tenure. Mike Hout giving us all these good numbers, Joe, but boy, that's some kind of impressive run. Well, very proud of that. And uh, we're competitive, so as uh, appreciative and respectful and humble we are winning all those championships, sometimes one's mind starts going to the others that we were so close to winning uh, that we didn't. (laughs) Um, There are a couple of years where you know, we had some outstanding teams and they're still outstanding teams, even if they didn't have a, a national championship to show for it. They had spectacular years. And sometimes, Chris, in our world today, you know, where great teams are only remembered or recognized if they win a championship. Um, I, I think sometimes people for, forget or overlook the other team was really, really good, too, that they beat. And uh, and I think. Um, we had quite a few really, really good teams that uh, were just as talented as some of those that have won. So I, I appreciate them all. And like I said, as an athletic director, I feel very blessed to be part of that journey. 
you know, wrapping up this uh, school year now, the 22-23 season, you had teams that won six uh, Big 12 championships, women's basketball, women's gymnastics, women's tennis, uh, of course, softball, men's golf, uh, women's softball regular season and postseason, and two national titles this past school year, women's gymnastics, their sixth the last nine years, and, of course, the incredible run with Patty Gassoth, three straight and her fifth in the last seven years, national championships in softball for the University of Oklahoma. It's amazing, isn't it? Uh, uh, we would appreciate that. And I think we have to continue to harp on um, a spirit of gratitude here because uh, that kind of success is rare. In some cases, it's unprecedented. Certainly when you think of the historical milestones some of these programs have set, not just in Oklahoma history, but all of NCAA history. And that's that's really special. You know, In the last few years, even five or 10, we've seen people do amazing things. We had, we've seen the home run record broken twice, the national all-time home run record broken twice by two different Sooners. Most recently, Jocelyn Allo. In fact, she broke, put the baseball and softball statistics together. She broke both of them. <laughs> so uh, that's quite an amazing feat. You know, uh, Taylor Robinson, this Robertson this year just broke the all-time three-point record. And so you see amazing accomplishments by the athletes and uh, and the coaches that recruit and develop them. And you have, you know, two sports that are like a gold standard. But on top of those kind of championships, Chris, uh, the ones we cherish, too, I think they're like a championship is when you see athletes finish their degree. And that's like an academic championship. I, I tell our athletes all the time, that's an incredible accomplishment there look at the statistics and how few people get to go to college in some cases you know debt free here play sports have a degree go on in their livelihood some it'll be pro sports some it'll be olympics but others are going into their their full-time livelihood based on the kind of experience they had at oklahoma and just this past semester chris we set an all-time cumulative gpa for our student athletes which went from a 3-2 to a 3-2-5. That's pretty remarkable to see the kind of success in the classroom they're having and then graduating at nearly 90%. Uh, th those are those are important achievements, too, that I don't want to overlook. Yeah, I know you've always taken great pride in that, Joe. I saw some figures that under you more than 2,400 student athletes have earned their degrees from the University of Oklahoma. I know your students have earned a 3.0 grade point or higher each of the past 23 terms of school record. That, that's really something. It is. When we only had one semester on record prior to this streak. Uh, so that wasn't happening anywhere close to any type of regular basis. So to get on that streak that's almost 12 years is remarkable. Well, you've had quite a building campaign while well, you've been there too, Joe. A renovation, building a variety of athletic facilities, uh, doing a $160 million renovation at Gaylord Family Memorial Stadium. Griffin Family Performance Center, men's and women's basketball construction, the heading to heading the hall, and of course now Love Field uh, just keeps building there. And again, it's always a arms race, isn't it? <laughs> well, it is because uh, athletes that we're recruiting are going to other campuses, seeing things that they have, and they come to our campus and compare the type of uh, experience they may have uh, on our campus with some that they've learned at other places. So. Can't uh, can't ignore the comparative analysis that takes place. But more than that, it, it's having what Oklahoma needs and our athletes need to be successful, not just against the competition, but the right type of state-of-the-art places to practice and develop their high-level skills and then, of course, compete. And that's always been our goal, to give them the kind of resources. And it's not just all bricks and mortar. It's, it's having the best sports medicine. It's having the best strength and conditioning it's having the best nutritional science it's having the best mental health it's having the best uh, academic support and uh, to go along with the great coaching that they get so it's a uh, well-rounded um, set of investments that support those kind of resources and i uh we mentioned earlier it, that you got to thank the donors that make that happen um they're a huge part of the success of our program. I say many times, 
Chris, that uh, when when you have that sort of image of student athletes taking a championship trophy and then what do they do? They raise it above their heads. You know, you see the hands of the athletes that are on that trophy, but there are a lot of other hands that um, should be on that trophy as well. And all the support staff and coaches that we mentioned, but I also give credit to the donors and the ticket holders because it's their funds that help make it happen. As you know, you just mentioned we're a self-sustaining operation, so we can't go anywhere else and uh, ask for state appropriations or some type of subsidy to make all this happen. We have to um, seek the support of the private sector and, and uh, other businesses that s- sponsor our program. And we always want to tip our cap to them because without them, we couldn't make it happen. We come back with Joe Castiglione. We're going to talk uh, about SEC and a new venture with the University of Oklahoma. Much more NIL, portals, all kinds of stuff that we'll hear Joe's comments on. But after we take this break on Oklahoma Sports Scene. Billy Sims knows barbecue. How about nine meats, including brisket, chicken, pork, turkey, and ribs? Just to name a few and seven homestyle sides. We start early to slow smoke the most delicious meats for over 12 hours. Every day. Wherever you want, online, dine in, curbside, or carry out. We've had a passion for over 15 years of serving delicious barbecue to people like you. Billy Sims has fast, drop-in friendly neighborhood service. Loud enough for a tailgate and fancy enough for a wedding. Like we said, Billy Sims knows barbecue. You did it, Tulsa. You named the team. We named the team. You named the team. The Tulsa Oilers indoor football team kicks off in March, Saturday nights, 7 p.m., BOK Center. Season tickets are on sale now. Go to TulsaOilersFootball.com. That's TulsaOilersFootball.com to get your season tickets now. Don't miss your chance to experience the fast pace, helmet hitting, pad popping excitement of professional indoor football. TulsaOilersFootball.com. TulsaOilersFootball.com. This episode is sponsored by Equity Bank. Athletes work hard day in and day out to improve their game. They put in time and effort to stay in shape and bring their A game for the big day. Our tellers do the same thing with banking. We work hard to serve our communities and keep your money safe. Equity Bank, we never forget it's your money. With Joe Castiglione, celebrating his 25th year as the Director of Athletics at the University of Oklahoma. And Joe, you don't have enough challenges. All of a sudden, now you're getting this university ready to jump into the SEC. Let's talk about that move in 2024. So, Chris, even in the last, let's say, six months, you know, we've made a lot of progress in uh, defining uh, a proper and orderly and, uh, I think, appropriate um, final year in the Big 12 and a strategy to enter the SEC. Uh, we want to be a great member. I keep saying this over and over again uh, as we uh, continue our membership in the Big 12. There are Big 12 championships our teams want to uh, compete for and win and uh, be a great partner, you know, as the Big 12 has been for us all these years in uh, supporting all of its member institutions. And we have something new going on in the Big 12, right? This uh, year too, Chris, we have four new members coming in uh, starting this fall. So people will see some new competition on our schedule, Cincinnati or BYU or Houston or the University of Central Florida. So we'll be transitioning uh, uh, one year with a bigger conference in the Big 12. And then as you mentioned, July 1, 2024, we become an official member of the SEC. There's a lot there. Uh, I know we we're coming off just uh, a week or two ago with the uh, SEC 2024 football schedule being released. Now, I want to be clear, at the time of this taping, the actual dates of those games have not yet been set, but the opponents uh, for each SEC member have been identified. And uh, they were listed in alphabetical order. So a lot of people have kind of misread that. They thought Alabama is the first SEC opponent that we will face. It's not impossible that could happen. I don't know. It might happen. But the opponents were listed in alphabetical order. So 
Uh, don't let that uh, confuse the actual schedule that will come out at a later time. But a set of opponents that are just uh, exciting everybody. I still want to remind people we have a big 12 season. <laughs> Let's not get ahead of ourselves. I'll be plenty of excitement come yeah. July 2024. The other part of this is we've been meeting with the SEC now for uh, quite a few months, just in forward thinking, planning, understanding new policies and procedures that we will have to um, transition to, which has been great. They've been so helpful and a lot of things we were already doing. So in some ways uh, we'll be, you know, in great shape to transition some things that will need a little bit more work, but we've been planning this now for uh, the better part of 18 months or more. So uh, we've got uh, internal committees working on that. Uh, you can imagine new schedules have travel plans that are different, you know, all kinds of things that will come. Uh, uh, obviously we'll be traveling to new places. So people will be interested in following the Sooners to some of the you know new venues that we, we haven't been to before. But on the other hand, SEC members that are our new uh, partners haven't been to Oklahoma either. So we'll be welcoming you know, some new fans here. A um, couple of the teams that we uh, are scheduled to play in 24 at home actually have, have played in Norman in the last 20 years, Alabama and Tennessee more recently. But um, we're, uh, we're looking forward to all of that. And uh, we have a committee externally too as well, Chris, that we – uh, develop between town and gown, if you will, to try and work with our city and county and our regional area to identify, you know, things that we would want to address before we start getting the kinds of uh, fan support from the other schools coming here. And they're looking at everything, trying to make Norman a even better place of uh, belonging and welcoming. So lots of operational things, uh, basically some uh, visual uh, components and uh, the reality of this is going to be special. And uh, uh, certainly working with our coaches to make sure anything and everything they have to, to do to transition is being addressed the right way. Well, I know that 24 schedule came out and the boy, the Oklahoma fans are excited. You said, Joe, uh, Alabama, uh, Tennessee, South Carolina, they count Texas as a home game for us in 24. Then the away game, too. Our first trips ever to LSU. We hope it's a night game. Auburn and Ole Miss. And we get back to our old campus. Uh, Mizzou is coming uh, on to Columbia in 24 as well. Yeah, that's a place where both you and I have some history. Sure. <laughs> so, uh, I, um, you know, again, I, I've heard from many, many of, uh, of our fans already that are very, very excited about that. But again, you're going to hear me. It sounds like a broken record. First things first, big 12 this yeah. year. And I got to say, look at that big 12 schedule. We start September 2nd, Arkansas State at home and SMU. Then we're excited over this side of the state, Tulsa. The Sooners are rolling into Tulsa September 16th and play TU. We've been very intentional about trying to have uh, more and more of a presence here. Chris, I can think back to uh, former sports scene shows that we've taped in all different kind of places over the years. That's right. <laughs> Gotta miss some going up to Tulsa and taping a few of those actually with you. Those were some really, really fun times, but you've heard me say this before and we've lived to it that uh, Tulsa is a very, very important area for us. Obviously we're recruiting in there in every sport. We got a great alumni base, great fan base overall it's close, you know, it's less than two hours to, to Norman. So uh, we, we aren't just asking people from Tulsa to come here. We're going there as well. The games that we've scheduled in the past against uh, uh, Tulsa University and football, we're scheduling games in the uh, Tulsa area and basketball and other events. Uh, we had some Big 12 championships up there. We've worked with the NCAA to get some NCAA uh, championships up there. So we're uh, we're backing up our commitment to have a greater uh, presence in Tulsa, and that will continue. Coming up next on Oklahoma Sports Scene, right here on this set, the National College Baseball Coach of the Year, Roberts University's Ryan Fulmer, next 
talk about oh, you baseball and uh, those twin snakes. Around the clock, throughout eastern Oklahoma, we are devoted to one thing, improving the health of our communities, our home. We are your friends, your neighbors. We are the people of St. Francis. This episode is sponsored by Equity Bank. Athletes work hard day in and day out to improve their game. They put in time and effort to stay in shape and bring their A game for the big day. Our tellers do the same thing with banking. We work hard to serve our communities and keep your money safe. Equity Bank, we never forget it's your money. The Oklahoma Sports Hall of Fame, home of the Paycom Jim Thorpe Award, is a treasure trove of memorabilia honoring Oklahoma sports legends. For museum hours or to schedule a tour, go to oklahomasportshalloffame.org. And we welcome you back to the Billy Sims Barbecue in the Farm Shopping Center in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and welcome the National College Baseball Coach of the Year, Ryan Fulmer of the Old Roberts University Golden Eagles, just back from Omaha, Nebraska. Coach, congratulations. Thank you. What a great run this past season. Sure yeah. made the city proud. This, this baseball team kind of became the darlings of the whole nation, though. Yeah, I think so. You know, I think uh, a lot of people were pearl, pulling for the underdog, and yeah. we seemed to kind of uh, fit that mold. So uh, I know we... Uh, I think the biggest thing you look at is the way we played. I think people enjoyed the way that our team competed and the way they played. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure proud they got the recognition they deserve. Could have been easy on the uh, heart, though, for the manager, though, boy. <laughs> they talk about uh, cardiac kids is coming. Oh, yeah. let, oh, it's seventh, eighth inning. Yeah, let's go start going now. Jeez. Yeah, you know, somebody had said we're kind of the Cinderella story, and, and I brought up the fact that I, I think when you think of Cinderella stories, you think of people that kind of, had this magical run late and, yeah. and don't go through any adversity and man it was exactly the opposite for us we had, we had rattled right. off a bunch of wins in a row uh, and then we hit some adversity for the second game of the regional we we're down eight nothing in the second inning ended up finding a way to win we lose the first game in the super regional uh, in dramatic fashion and found a way to win so uh, this is a really resilient tough bunch and man i'm sure glad i was a part of it a school record 52 wins for Roberts University. They now have won 21 Summer League championships. They won a regional title, a super regional title, and of course one of just 64 teams in all of college baseball to make that run to get to eight teams to go to the College World Series. All oh, your first trip back to that series since 1978. You've been there before, though, with part of the Oklahoma State program in the 90s, right, yeah, Coach? I had uh, the good fortune to play there in 1996 as a player. In 1999, I was the director of operations at Oklahoma State and had the opportunity to go to then as well. But uh, this one was sure special. Uh, and as you said, it had been a long time since ORU had been back there, and it's, it's good to, uh, to have a chance to get back there again. You came to Old Roberts University the first time in 2003. Talk yeah. about that. Yeah, it was a long time ago, right? Wow. You look back on Hard it now. To and 20 it, years uh, now? It's, yeah. We're going on 20 years, yeah. and it's, been, it's gone fast. I uh, you know, had a chance to sit down with my family and reflect a little bit. And uh, You don't realize how fast that time goes until you really right. reflect a little bit and look back on it. But, uh, man, I wouldn't trade it for anything. Became the head coach in uh, 2013. Yeah. Uh, you know, I spent nine years here as an assistant under Rob Walton, who uh, – uh, for me, what a, what a great mentor to have. And at to, Oklahoma State now, right? The yeah, he's coach. at Oklahoma yep. State now. You know, I had an opportunity to work for Rob for nine years, and what a great learning experience that was for me. And, uh, you know, it's been a great mentor since. So I've been fortunate to be around a lot of good coaches. You know, when you look all the way back to the Oklahoma State yeah. days and, and Gary Ward and Tom Holliday and John Farrell and Robbie Wine, on to Rob Walton. And, uh, man, I've, had, uh, I've been blessed. I've been very lucky to be around good people. We well, talk about this All Roberts baseball team as being a Cinderella team, a uh, magical season run, and there's nothing magical about the kind of players <laughs> you put together that put together a nation's longest win streak, 21 games in a row, 31 of the last 33 games, and you had some other figure you had too. Yeah, I think we were 42 and six down the stretch is, <laughs> is what it ended up being. So, you know, I think the one of the things I'm most proud of when, when you reflect on the season is the consistency with which we played. I think. Uh, 
you know, people get on runs late in the year and they get hot late in the year and make a run, but we were able to make that an extremely long run. So it felt like you just played really well for a long period of time. So when I look back on this team, I, I think about the consistency they played with, and uh, that'll last a while. Now you carried the pride of the Summit League, too. Uh, all these Power Five conferences dominating uh, all the sports now. And uh, what a big break for the Summit League, their first College World Series team, or Roberts University. Yeah, it's a big deal. I think when you, when you take a league that's the size of ours and you're able to, to kind of put them on the map and people realize where, where it is now and where you're from and who you're representing. So it's a big deal for our league. So hopefully we can, uh, we can piggyback this into something special. What are you going to remember most about this uh, run, Coach? Oh, man, that's a good question. Uh, it goes so fast yeah. that I don't, I don't think you really have time to reflect in the moment. Uh, but again, as I said, the consistency with which we played was, was really good. Uh, I think that really stands out. Uh, I think we're a really balanced team. When you look at what we finished nationally in terms of rankings, we were the number one ranked defensive team in the country. Right. Uh, we finished seventh nationally in pitching and seventh nationally in batting average. So I think you look at how balanced our, our group was, it doesn't happen very often. Um, so I think the consistency with which we played and, and as balanced as we were, I think that'll stick. Talk about the atmosphere at the College World Series uh, at Omaha there, the beautiful stadium there. And uh, uh, what was it like? And uh, did, yeah. you, did you feel kind of like people were kind of wondering, is this old Roberts team for real? <laughs> I mean, I, I think you're always going to get some of that. But yeah. I think uh, once people saw us play, they understood this was a, a really good team, a really special group. Uh, but the atmosphere in Omaha, if you've never been there, uh, I encourage everybody to go see yeah. it. It's, uh, it's one of those very unique things in sports. Um, it's unlike anything that, uh, that I've ever seen or been a part of. It's such a unique atmosphere and a unique city that's really built around the College World Series and, and that week-long event. Um, and it's indescribable how, uh, how electric that stadium was each and every night. I was so impressed too. It looked like this team was not the least bit intimidated. No. Taking on TCU, of course, and the mighty Big 12 and you know, Florida, the SEC, and LSU and the SEC and stuff. And they seemed to think, hey, we, we belong here. Yeah, absolutely. I th and I think that comes from uh, the consistency with which we played all year long. I think they knew going into it, we had a really good team. And if we played well, we were going to have an opportunity to win. Um, and, and that was. Uh, that was reflected in the way they played. As you said, they were fearless. Uh, they never quit. They never gave up. We had some late dramatic comeback wins. Yeah. Um, and just, it was one of those teams that just, uh, they had it. Whatever it is, yeah. that group had it. Well, as we tape this show, it's a Monday afternoon. Of course, the finals are going to be played Monday night because the, uh, Florida forced that third game. And, uh, boy, and the way Florida took apart LSU in <laughs> the second game, uh, uh, who do you think was the best team up there, and uh, what do you think the final results will well, be? Well, you, you can definitely make an argument for both of the teams that are still playing. Yeah. Very talented, uh, very deep. Not only their lineups are deep, but the rotation is deep. The pitching staffs are deep. Uh, I don't know if I'd pick one, but yeah. uh, it's going to be a fun game to watch. City of Omaha, boy, this is really their big event. They really get behind this, don't yeah. they? Yeah. I tell you what, when, when, whenever you have a chance to see it, and again, I encourage everybody to go yeah. see it, you just understand how big it is for that city. The entire city rallies around this event, and uh, I don't know that there's one person that's not touched in one way or another during that week-long event with what's going on in, uh, in, that, uh, in that ballpark. So pretty cool to be a part they of. They take good care of the team, a lot of events and stuff to go oh, to and things. And yeah, it's... Uh, uh, it's a it's a family atmosphere that's built for student athletes really I mean uh, you know from where the team hotel is to the ballpark is about a 12 minute walk there's restaurants all over they have fan fest going on so it's uh, it's one of those things that I'm sure our players will never forget and it's fun to be a part of get some good Omaha steaks there we did <laughs> we did they're hard to beat we're gonna come back and talk much more with coach Ryan Fulmer about some of the individuals of this team as well when we come back on Oklahoma Sports Scene here at the Billy Sims Barbecue in the Farm Shopping Center in Tulsa, Oklahoma. You did it, Tulsa. You name the team. We name the team. You name the team. The Tulsa Oilers indoor football team kicks off in March, Saturday night, 7 p.m., BOK Center. Season tickets are on sale now. Go to TulsaOilersFootball.com. That's TulsaOilersFootball.com to get your season tickets now. Don't miss your chance to experience the fast pace, helmet hitting, pad popping excitement of professional indoor football. TulsaOilersFootball.com. TulsaOilersFootball.com. Billy Sims knows barbecue. How about nine meats, including brisket, chicken, pork, turkey, and ribs? Just to name a few and seven homestyle sides. We start early to slow smoke the most delicious meats for over 12 hours. Every day. 
wherever you want, online, dine-in, curbside, or carry-out. We've had a passion for over 15 years of serving delicious barbecue to people like you. Billy Sims has fast, drop-in friendly neighborhood service. Loud enough for a tailgate and fancy enough for a wedding. Like we said, Billy Sims knows barbecue. As the sun rises over eastern Oklahoma, we are devoted to one thing, improving the health of our communities, our home. We are your friends, your neighbors. We are the people of St. Francis. Back on Oklahoma Sports Scene with the National College Baseball Coach of the Year, Oak University's own World Series coach, Ryan Fulmer. And coach, dramatic victories in the regional and super regionals. Take us back to some of those moments. And Boy, I don't know how you kept your heart still there. Wow, jeez. <laughs> well, I, you know, I think you have confidence in your, in your team and in your players, and uh, that's where some of the calmness may come from. But, uh, yeah, as you said, uh, we, we, we won, but we had some hurdles to overcome in different moments. Uh, second game of, of the regional tournament in Stillwater, uh, we're down 8 nothing in the second inning <laughs> and, and find a way to kind of battle back in it. And by the fifth inning, I think it was, we had a 12-8 to eight lead, kind of a crazy back-and-forth game that we're able to, to kind of overcome some challenges in that game. Uh, then you look at the first game of the Super Regional. Uh, we're Eugene, in Eugene, Oregon. Oregon. Yeah. yeah, and uh, uh, we have uh, an 8 nothing lead early in the ball game. Yeah, I thought it was over. I was yeah. celebrating already. <laughs> yeah, it was not over. Yeah. We ended up losing 9-8, to eight, so we had to, we had to overcome some things to, to be able to get back in it. We had a dramatic win, uh, game two of the Super Regional. Uh, we came back in the ninth inning, and Justin Quinn hit a, hit a two-run double to, uh, to win the ball game for us. So, uh, you know, we had to overcome some things to get to that point. We hit a three-run home run. Um, in the ninth inning of game one in the College World Series wow. to end up winning. So a very re resilient team. Uh, the never never say die, never quit uh, attitude was, was evident with this bunch. I think that's why people gravitated to this, to this group because uh, they were never out of it. Amazing, and you did it with 17 newcomers yeah. on the 2023 ORU squad. I don't people realize that, young team. It was, you know, it was one of those teams where you put together and uh, we knew going into the season, we, we thought we had a good bunch. We were going to have to make some adjustments along the way. And, you know, we took those first 20 games and uh, it, it was okay at one point. I mean, we were 10 and 8 at one point in the season. That, yeah. and, then, and then got on the run that we mentioned earlier. So uh, this is a team that, that continued to get better and better all year long and uh, able to make a special run. But as you said, we had 17 newcomers. So we, we knew we needed to play together. Yeah. They knew they needed to get on the field and create some chemistry on the field. But... Uh, we knew we were talented, and uh, man, they got hot at the right time. What did you think about the number four seed? A lot of people made a big factor that you're the lowest seed that got into the World Series. And it doesn't matter to us. <laughs> you know, I think when you look back on it, in, uh, you want to make the postseason. You want to be in those type of games. Um, regardless of what seed you are or yeah. where they send you, uh, you're going to play good clubs, and you're going to have to play well to win, and we knew that. So we were very comfortable going into Stillwater. Obviously, close to home, our, our fans traveled really right. well. Um, it's a ballpark that we've had some success in too, so we felt good with the draw, uh, regardless of what seed you were. Uh, but again, a, an extremely tough regional. Sure. I think going into it, you could have made an argument that any of those four clubs could have won that tournament, and fortunately, we were able to come out on top. Let's talk about some of the key Golden Eagle players. There were so many of them, had such great seasons. And you got to start, I guess, with Jonah Cox, who uh, the entire nation was watching this incredible hit streak he was on. It was a long one. Uh, what, what fun to be part of. Um, and we've shared this with a, a lot of people that, you know, Jonah, Jonah did something that only three players in the history of our game have done, and that's, that's pretty special. But our, t our whole team was invested in that streak along with him. So I think that ended up taking some of the pressure off of Jonah, knowing that, uh, you know, everybody was kind of in it with him. I don't think he felt isolated or yeah. on an island when he was trying to go through some of those moments, but pretty cool to be a part of. That was a 47-game hit streak. <laughs> he was the Summer League Player of the Year. The season average, 412 batting average, 11 home runs, 68 RBIs. On the other side of the mound, all you had was the uh, National Relief Pitcher of the Year yeah. in uh, Cade Denton. Talk about that young man. And not only did he have a great year this year, but he had an exceptional year a year ago, too. And a guy that's just a reliable guy at the back end of the bullpen. And 
as you know, any yeah. great team's got to have that guy at the end of the game that you can hand the ball to that you know is going to close it out. Um, and Cade was that guy. He had two great years, and uh, his future is bright, and we're, we're sure looking forward to watching his professional career. Had 15 saves in this uh, 2023 season, a 1.83 ERA, finished with four shutout innings in the College World Series opening win. Though no, that was a big one there. It was wow. a big one, you know, and he ended up, uh, he ended up game, pitching so, a run. Yeah, yeah, he ended up pitching a bunch. And, uh, you know, we closed him at the end of games. He, he was also in some long relief modes, too. He had a couple outings where it was three or four innings long. So, really versatile guy, and what a year he put together. First baseman, co captain of the uh, Oravich University. Uh, Jake McMurray batted uh, 326, 47 RBIs. Yeah, just a great leader, I think, as much as anything. And you rattle off some of his numbers. Exceptional player, hitting our leadoff spot, made zero errors at first base. Might have been the best defensive first baseman in the country. Uh, but what made him so valuable for our team is his leadership um, inside our clubhouse. I think to have great teams and to make great runs like we did, you have to have leadership inside your team. And, and he's definitely been a great leader for us. Leader in home runs, the right fielder, uh, Matt Hogan. Yeah, Matt. Matt's a guy that, uh, that came in. He's a one-year guy, so uh, unfortunately he's not going to be with us next yeah. year. But, uh, but again, had a great year. As you said, put up big power numbers, solidified the middle of our lineup when we really had that. We needed that guy in the middle at some point to step up and drive in a lot of runs, and, and he was able to do that. We talk about Jonah's streak. Right, right. You know, and for, for, for a guy to be able to go 47 straight games with a hit, <laughs> You know, there has to be a lot of things that happen around him. Number yeah. one, you've got to have good players around you to see enough pitches. Sure. We had Justin Quinn in front. You know, we had Matt Hogan right behind him. Um, you have to be really good, and Jonah is really good, and you have to have a little bit of luck. He's had all those things, but Matt Hogan was one of those guys that, that hit right behind Jonah and was able to protect him a little bit. 19 home runs and 72 RBIs. Blaze Brothers. I thought it was a brother's act. I think at the end of the boy, he is a clutch guy and had the game-winning home run, of course, for us. Yeah, he had a couple big swings throughout the year, but none, none really bigger than game one in the College World Series. He hits a three-run homer in the, um, in the ninth to propel us to a win. So he's that guy that, uh, that man was sneaky. Anytime we needed a big swing, he was, he was able to make it. Uh, also stole 20 bases, so yeah. a really versatile guy. Played second base, also played left field. Uh, played a little bit of right field as well, so a guy that we can move all over the place. Really good player. All right, now look to the future, Coach. Don't get much to rest here with uh, <laughs> you lose nine seniors off this uh, championship team. Yeah, we got a lot of we got a lot of production to be able to replace. Uh, we feel good about the the group we have coming in. We're going to take the rest of the summer and try to fill a couple holes that we feel like we uh, we need to address. Uh, but we're looking forward to next year already. Yeah, what a great success Oral Roberts has had. The Sweet 16 run a couple years ago. You run to the World Series, and I was really impressed. Listing and I mean, as far as way as Eugene, Oregon, Omaha, Nebraska. What a great following the Golden Eagles had of fans. It was incredible. I'd say, you know, you go back to the regional uh, in Stillwater. Yeah. We traveled really well, and then we go halfway across the country, Eugene, Oregon, and uh, man, I know we had several hundred people there, but it sounded like several did, thousand yeah. people there. And then obviously in Omaha, you know, we were fortunate and blessed that a lot of our people were able to travel. Uh, to Omaha. We figured we had somewhere around close to 200 former players that actually wow. made the trip as well. So some pretty unique moments that we're sure proud of. All right, Coach, we got something for you too. Uh -oh. Here you go. <laughs> I twin snake. This, Tell this us about the twin snakes. My well, I, I, to be honest, I don't know a whole lot about it. This was started <laughs> by uh, some of our players and our first base yeah, coach. Jimmy Turk was one. Yeah. Actually feeding them to the guys That's on right. first base. So Jimmy Turk takes these and puts them in his pocket. When guys get to first base, <laughs> they get one. So this became a fan favorite in Omaha as well. Sweet and sour snakes and the Haribo Company of Germany sent you a little They package, sent us a couple it? boxes, yeah. Oh, that's great. Coach, again, congratulations. Fantastic Thank season. You. Really proud Appreciate of you. Appreciate it. Our National Coach of the Year, Old Roberts University, Ryan Fold, will come back to talk NBA basketball, the draft, with Matt Pitto, Voice of the Thunder. Around the clock throughout eastern Oklahoma. We are devoted to one thing, improving the health of our communities, our home. We are your friends, your neighbors. We are the people of St. Francis. You did it, Tulsa. You name the team. We named the team. You name the team. The Tulsa Oilers indoor football team kicks off in March, Saturday nights, 7 p.m., BOK Center. Season tickets are on sale now. Go to TulsaOilersFootball.com. That's
Visit TulsaOilersFootball.com to get your season tickets now. Don't miss your chance to experience the fast pace, helmet-hitting, pad-popping excitement of professional indoor football. TulsaOilersFootball.com. TulsaOilersFootball.com. The Oklahoma Sports Hall of Fame, home of the Paycom Jim Thorpe Award, is a treasure trove of memorabilia honoring Oklahoma sports legends. For museum hours or to schedule a tour, go to OklahomaSportsHallOfFame.org. Welcome back to Oklahoma Sports Scene at Billy Sims Barbecue in the Farm Shopping Center in Tulsa, Oklahoma. National Basketball Association held its uh, annual player draft this past Thursday. 58 players selected in the two nationally televised rounds. The Oklahoma City Thunder received an excellent draft rating. And here to tell us about it via Zoom call, Oklahoma City, the uh, longtime radio voice of the Thunder, Matt Pitto. Asked Matt about the breakdown of these two draft picks, number 10, Kaysen Wallace, in a trade with Dallas, and then the 50th pick, Deontay Johnson from Kansas State via Florida after a two full seasons with a cardiac issue. You know, Wallace is a real defensive disruptor. Chris um, has great instincts on the defensive end of the floor. A lot of people in the draft felt like he was probably the best on-ball defender coming out. Uh, that's top to bottom in all 58 selections. But I think the Thunder admire as much his off-ball instincts that they do as on-ball. And I think when you look at this team, Mark Dagnalt was pretty direct in talking about it's going to continue to progress based on its defensive improvement. And you look at Lou Dort, his ability to totally smother a perimeter uh, opponent. The Thunder know they need to account for in game plans. Shea Gildas Alexander improved dramatically defensively a season ago. Add Case and Wallace now also on the offensive end of the floor. is only 19 years old. And really, when you play at Kentucky, you don't have as much leeway given all the star power around you as he will in the NBA with the spacing in the NBA. So I think he's underrated offensively as well. I think he's a terrific uh, gem for them in round one, moving up to number 10 to get him. And then Keontae Johnson also picked 50th, probably projected higher than that based on his sheer athleticism. He's 6'6", really good rebounder for his size, a guy that knocked down 40% of his three-point shots in college. I think there were the medical concerns that scared some people off, uh, but even though he missed the season and a half as a result of that collapse that happened in 2020, the NBA cleared him for the draft. Really uh, good about uh, his uh, physical uh, you know, overall ability to continue to move forward and compete. Both guys bring competitive fire. Both guys, I think, have physicality the way they insert themselves into games. So they really fit, I think, in what the Thunder identity is now moving forward. Did uh, the Thunder fill their needs and uh, Sam Presti still have some more moves to make? Yeah, I, you know, I don't think they viewed the draft in needs terms, Chris. I think that where they are, uh, they still recognize this is their third draft in this reboot. Uh, so they're still in the developmental process. And I think they've always taken the approach. They want to go get Thunder players, guys that fit the prototype of what it is they value uh, in, in athletes in general. Both of these guys absolutely do that. And I think that in the modern game, you can play smaller. And they did that frequently last season. You add Chet Holmgren's seven-foot frame to what it is that they'll be doing this season. Fingers crossed that all things continue to progress. For him, coming back from the foot issue that sidelined him all of last season, I think this team, by adding Holmgren along with these two uh, players in the draft, they absolutely become better on paper. And now they've got to go out and develop and coalesce and learn to trust one another and do the things that really had this team uh, rising last season into the play-in game. Well, you know, another guy I talked about is a European player. In fact, he's a European uh, League MVP a couple of years ago, Mishi, I believe, who the actual Thunder actually have the right to if he should decide to come to the NBA. Yeah, and reports are he likely would like to come to the NBA, but how the Thunder factor him into the equation is an unknown right now. Uh, Sam Presti at the press conference for the two new additions through the draft acknowledged that there has been communication between Micic and the Thunder and that there is a desire for him to play in the NBA. But what direction that takes from here, I think Bears watching absolutely. He's 29. Does that fit the Thunder timeline for the guys on this roster top to bottom? That would be the question. Clearly accomplished enough to play in the NBA, you'd think. Uh, so I would say stay tuned on that one. Your thoughts on the talent, of course, in the NBA draft this year. Everybody talking about the 19-year-old, seven foot four wonder guy from France, uh, Wemenyama, uh, is he really that good? And what kind of money is he going to get? <laughs> yeah, well, he he slotted. So he. I think that the, the cost for San Antonio 
are defined his first three seasons into his fourth, possibly. Uh, so I think that's one of the, the benefits of the way things are structured in the NBA. And big part of the reason the Thunder, I think, feel good about continuing their uh, movement forward primarily through the draft, Chris, is you somewhat limit costs in terms of player salaries. And, and in a market this small, market as small as San Antonio, that's beneficial for both of those teams. But uh, he's a generational talent. We know that. The league has never seen a player that does the things he does at his size. So you think the way the Spurs have developed players over the years, uh, he's going to be a player that's a multi-time all-star and considered one of the best in the NBA in time. Uh, but I think the key uh, words there are in time. I don't think that it instantly happens. I think he's got to learn and acclimate himself to the physicality of the NBA. The Spurs roster is nowhere near being complete around him. Uh, so will that mean a, a massive meteoric climb in the standings for them? I, I would not suspect so, but I do think he's going to be one to watch and he'll be watched frequently. I'm sure the Spurs will get plenty of national TV exposure this season. This is Matt Pinto, longtime radio play-by-play -play voice, one of the best of the Oklahoma City Thunder. And uh, Matt, let's look back to this past season. Uh, 40 and 42, 10th place in the Western Conference, made the play-ins, and by all measures seemed like a, uh, surpassed everybody's projections for the Thunder last year. Yeah, I think they absolutely did that. The national narrative was <laughs> very similar to what had gone on the two previous seasons, and uh, the team really came together. I think when you look at the development that went on throughout the course of his rookie season for Jalen Williams of Santa Clara, that made a massive difference in helping Josh Giddy and Shea Gildas Alexander and his bust out first team All NBA All Star season. Uh, Lou Dort brought, you know, in essence, um, his calling card every night. So this team was strong defensively. While they had Kenrich Williams, he amplified that incredibly versatile in, in what he brings to the court. And I think the team really enjoyed playing in the system, the structure that Mark Dagnall laid out for them, which is pretty equal opportunity. Uh, everybody is involved in playmaking. They look to attack opposing defenses early. They had uh, a top five team pace wise in the NBA defensively very disruptive given the length and the size on the roster so I think a lot of those things bode incredibly well for where they are positioned right now and where they're headed Matt what are the projections now for this team for the 23-24 season are they back to being an NBA playoff team yeah, I, I think that that's always a slippery slope, Chris. And uh, it's never linear growth, it doesn't seem, with a team as young as this. Uh, so to anticipate that because they won 40 a season ago, that they trend upward to 45, 46, 47 victories, uh, I think is probably uh, an ill-fated prediction, uh, simply based on the variables in the NBA and uh, the insertion of Chet Holmgren. There's a lot of excitement about it. We know he's got an incredible skill set. He'll help out rim protecting on the interior defensively, but they've got to make it work. They, they've got to come together really get connected in what they're doing at both ends of the floor and when you add a piece as significant as him uh, it could take some time so uh, I would say that uh, the fan base should absolutely be excited about where the Thunder are right now uh, but let's kind of hold our horses a little bit on massive projections of big time playoff runs in the immediate future but they are definitely trending in that direction and look Sam Presti's Vision has always been. He's been transparent about it to build a contender that is a consistent contender, that's sustainable. And the Thunder are going about structuring their roster and moving forward in exactly that direction. What's now on the preseason schedule? When do they crank things up again? Summer League starts on the 3rd of July, so just uh, down the road in Salt Lake City. They'll play three games there. Then they've got uh, four more, maybe five or six, depending on how they uh, compete out in Las Vegas. That summer league starts on July 7th. will end on the 17th of July. So uh, no rest at this point. A bit later on in the summer for certain, uh, but they've got uh, some things to take on. I think that the plan is for Casey Wallace and Keontae Johnson both playing summer league, and we'll see who else. Uh, they always uh, finalize that roster right before uh, competition begins, which in this case will be July 3rd. Matt Pinto, Voice the Thunder, our NBA insider. Thanks for the time, Matt. Appreciate it. You get some rest, too, by the way, buddy. I sure will. My pleasure, Chris. Thanks. All right, we'll come right back to my Lincoln's Two Cents with my equity bank commentary right after this. This episode is sponsored by Equity Bank. Athletes work hard day in and day out to improve their game. They put in time and effort to stay in shape and bring their A game for the big day. Our tellers do the same thing with banking. We work hard to serve our communities and keep your money safe. Equity Bank. We never forget it's your money. 
You did it, Tulsa. You name the team. We name the team. You name the team. The Tulsa Oilers indoor football team kicks off in March, Saturday nights, 7 p.m., BOK Center. Season tickets are on sale now. Go to TulsaOilersFootball.com. That's TulsaOilersFootball.com to get your season tickets now. Don't miss your chance to experience the fast pace, helmet hitting, pad popping excitement of professional indoor football. TulsaOilersFootball.com. TulsaOilersFootball.com. Billy Sims knows barbecue. How about nine meats, including brisket, chicken, pork, turkey, and ribs? Just to name a few and seven homestyle sides. We start early to slow smoke the most delicious meats for over 12 hours. Every day. Wherever you want. Online, dine-in, curbside, or carry-out. We've had a passion for over 15 years of serving delicious barbecue to people like you. Billy Sims has fast, drop-in friendly neighborhood service. Loud enough for a tailgate and fancy enough for a wedding. Like we said, Billy Sims knows barbecue. Now Equity Bank presents Lincoln's Two Cents Worth, my closing sports commentary. This is a very personal one for me. It's a true love story. This past Friday, the 23rd of June, I drove to Norman, Oklahoma for a celebration of life for Barbara Stoner Owens, the childhood sweetheart and wife of Steve Owens, the University of Oklahoma's second Heisman Trophy winner back in 1969. The 30th of this month would have been their 56th wedding anniversary. They've been together for 60 years. Barbara was 15, Steve Owens was 14 when they first met in junior high in their hometown of Miami, Oklahoma. They were married in 1967. Steve told the story at the memorial there of a, borrowing a family car to get to Tulsa for their honeymoon. What a honeymoon it was, he said. Eight dollar room at the Ramada Inn. A great meal at a new McDonald's fast food restaurant. Then a James Bond movie. Steve said later it was perfect. For the last six years, Barbara battled with dementia, spending the past three years in a memory center. Steve Owens visited her every single day. Barbara passed away on June 7th. They were always a team. Steve related stories of the brutal preseason workouts that Barbara led him through. Coach Bray Switzer talked about her, saying that he called and complained to her and said, hey, coach, ease up. He's carrying the football too many times and he's getting tired, which Bray responded by telling Barbara that, uh, hey, the football only weighs 13 ounces. Steve's 215 pounds. Then, of course, he had Steve Owens carry the ball a record 55 times in the final game against Oklahoma State University in a 28-27 Bedlam win at Stillwater in 1969. It was that year, 1969, that Steve won the Heisman Trophy, the nation's best college football player. It was Barbara that he said who ran around the campus though, yelling, I just won the Heisman, with Steve chasing behind her. These two kids from Miami, Oklahoma, found themselves in New York City for the Heisman Trophy presentation, then on the Johnny Carson Show, then got a call from the President of the United States, Richard Nixon, inviting them to come to Washington, D.C. and go with them on Air Force One to the big game of the year, Texas at Arkansas. Steve said he still has the presidential seal cufflinks that the President gave him. He gave Richard Nixon the Heisman Trophy cufflinks that he had. The First Baptist Church in Norman was packed last Friday during a thunderstorm. Barbara Owens, Paul Bearers, and included Steve's blocking fullback, his teammate Mike Harper, OU's 1978 Heisman Trophy winner, Billy Sims, National Championship quarterback, Jason White. It truly was a celebration of the perfect love story. That's my Lincoln's Two Cents presented by Equity Bank. Always remember, though, be a good sport.